Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Hope you all are doing well. Last Saturday, we had dinner from a restaurant that served Arabic food. Now, this is nothing sponsored. Before this corona widespread, on every Thursdays, there would be breakfast for my husband served at his office. So, every Thursday, he used to have breakfast from office and not from home. The food would be takeaway from this restaurant. He used to tell me that one day, let's eat out from here and it took this long. The food there is very tasty. Everything that we ordered was equally good. So thought to take you along. Almost a month we started eating out once a week and that would be on weekends. Nowadays the cases here are gradually decreasing and hope everything comes back to normal everywhere. If you live in Saudi Arabia, you would know about STCP and their service in this pandemic time has been very useful. We personally are a user of STCP and this time they have come up with something new. You need to transfer internationally and that gives you a chance to win a smart device. It's as simple as that. Every week there is a draw for two devices, so why not take the chance? And presently, STCP has started direct transfers to Philippines with Cebuana and Western Union. You just have to use STC Pay to do the international transfer and you enter the draw. So hurry up. And there we are at the location. It's Tagmi's restaurant. We in fact went to have an early dinner around at 6.30 something. The interior looked attractive and very neat. That's the falafel, mutabbal, hummus with shawarma. The bread was freshly baked and really steaming. This is tahina kofta. I'm preparing this recipe in the later part, so keep watching. Falafel was really delicious and even the dip that came along. So we had a filling dinner and then returned home. This clip was taken last Saturday and I prepared the tahina kofta, falafel and a sweet bread with ice cream stuffed after two days. I had received a video from my brother on a bread halwa with ice cream so thought of recreating it making it in a different way. Now the bread has to be deep fried in oil but that would suck a lot of oil. So I thought to apply ghee on both sides and place it in an oven to toast it and make it crispy. Bake at 180 degrees Celsius. When one side is brown in color, then turn to the other side. You need to powder half to 3 fourth cup sugar or more if you want extra sweet. Now powder the bread in a food processor or a blender. Add it in a vessel. Place the pan on medium flame. Add the powdered sugar. Then goes milk. I added a total of 3 cups milk. Keep mixing.
Once it starts to leave the sides of the pan, turn off the flame. You may use any pan and line a baking paper in it. I am using a silicone mold. Add the bread and press to the sides. Scrape off the extra. Now this is vanilla ice cream that I whipped again with a hand mixer to make it easy to pour. Cover with a cling film and place it in the freezer. For the tahina kofta, you need half kilo minced meat and to add in it, you need 1 cup chopped onion and 1 cup chopped parsley. For the spices, add 1 teaspoon red chilli flakes, half teaspoon black pepper powder, 1 tablespoon cinnamon powder and salt. Give a mix. My camera was off when I added the lemon zest, so don't forget to add the zest of 1 lemon and you will need the lemon later. Now again slice onion, 2 medium size and potato, again 2 medium size. Add that to a baking tray. To that add olive oil, then some fresh black pepper, some red chilli flakes, 1 teaspoon paprika. Mix well. Now roll to small round shapes or a kebab shape and place each on top of the onion potato mix. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and place the tray in it. Bake for 35 minutes or until the potato is cooked well. Meantime, you need to make a tahini mix. Now you can use store-bought tahini. If not, let me show you how to make it. Tahini is nothing but roasted sesame seeds paste. Here I am roasting 1 cup sesame seeds till light golden brown. The procedure is like how you make any nut butter like peanut butter, almond butter and so on. You can use a food processor or a strong blender or a mixer grinder. Powder it well. Add 2 or 3 tablespoons of sunflower oil or any flavorless oil and blend on high speed. You may add more oil for a creamy texture but that's optional. The seeds itself will have its own oil oozing out. So here's the tahini. The color depends on the color of the sesame seeds after roasting. Add that to a bowl. Then goes half cup curd, mix well. Now take the juice of one whole lemon and add. Mix well. Now you need one cup warm water. I added to the blender in which some tahini was left. Just a mix and add to the bowl little at a time. Add some salt and mix. 
Now this will be watery and that's how you need it. When the potatoes have cooked, pour the tahini mix all over. Place it back in the oven and bake for another 15 minutes at the same temperature. I had some hummus already in my fridge. I have a recipe done for this before. You may check the link in the description box. And that was a different lunch apart from our normal rice curry and such. Don't forget to try. This is delicious. Rihan had lunch during his break time from the class and Arman's classes starts at 2 p.m. I had soaked chickpeas the previous night for preparing falafel. It's Arman's favorite. I wanted to serve it along with lunch but didn't get time to prepare it. So thought to skip that for dinner. You need a bunch of parsley, 3 green chilies, 3 garlic cloves, 1 small onion, squeeze of lemon around 1 and a half tablespoon, 1 teaspoon red chilli powder, 2 teaspoon coriander powder, 1 teaspoon cumin seeds or cumin powder, half teaspoon black pepper powder, quarter cup all purpose flour, half teaspoon baking soda, blend well and add to a mixing bowl. Then coarsely grind the soaked chickpeas and mix with the parsley mixture. Check salt and add if needed. Apply some oil on your palm and roll to a medium round shape. It would be really tasty if deep fried, but to have it guilt free, I baked it at 220 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. When one side turns to a golden brown color, Turn to the other side and cook. Now to pour over the bread and ice cream, I made a simple caramel syrup. I didn't have butter or cream, so prepared with milk. Caramelizing 1 cup sugar with quarter cup water. Now add 1 cup milk, little at a time and be very careful while adding it. Make sure you are using a heavy bottom deep vessel. Mix and lastly add a pinch of baking soda. Mix thoroughly for a minute and it's done. From lunch, there was little keema left, so I cooked it over the stove top. Just like the hummus shawarma, the first time something I ate like that was laham hummus. That's hummus with minced meat. Now for a dip for the falafel, add 1 cup curd to a mixing bowl, 2-3 to three tablespoons of tahini, then goes 2 tablespoons mayonnaise. Then chop in some parsley leaves, salt, some red chilli flakes, black pepper powder. Now instead of mayonnaise, you may even use fresh cream. Lastly, some olive oil. And that's ready. Kima is cooked well. I in fact forgot to garnish the tahini kofta with chopped parsley for the lunch. 
Spread some hummus and add the meat in the center. This is very delicious when served very hot. Garnish with chopped parsley and olive oil. And that's our dinner. Finally, the ice cream. Now, I had kept this in the fridge section from the freezer an hour back so that it becomes easy to cut but still retain the shape. Looks almost like an ice cream cake. I had reheated the caramel sauce so it's delicious to eat with a cold sweet. And that completes today's video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. Do give a thumbs up and don't forget to share among your friends and family. As I always say, do try the recipes and let me know your feedback. Would love to hear from you all. Lastly, for more updates, do subscribe. See you with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.